Bowie is going to be known as the, the fishing rod. She, she will. Um, She's taking us out fishing? <laughs> Ice fishing. On a day like today. In your boat. Um, <laughs> and so that, she is going to open up whole worlds for her business. She's going to make so much money on that. She's going to have so much extra time. She's going to have abundant success. Um, and so when we look at what's our biggest you know, challenge, what's our biggest problem, there's one solution that will always solve every problem anyone has on the planet. That took me 50 years to figure it out. Um, my 24-year-old daughter, Melissa, she and I went out on a date last night. And we were talking and somehow we started talking about Google. And she was so impressed with Google. And I said, well, sweetheart, there's things that your dad knows that Google doesn't. Like the three elements of frustration. Look it up on Google. You won't find it. Um, you won't find this answer on Google either. Does anybody know what the one thing that will solve every problem and every single person on the planet all the time? How valuable would that be for you? Pretty valuable. So I'm like, you have to be a chancy. Let's go, Mark. It's like, <laughs> now comes the real question. Should I share? Shouldn't I share? You know what? I'm not going to share. <laughs> or Bill <laughs> Gates. <laughs> so there are three steps. There are three steps to, to solving any problem. Step one is examination. Step two is solutions. And step three is implementation. So those are the three steps. You want to solve anything? Examination, solution, implementation. The thing that's tricky about it is Einstein said, you can never solve a problem on the level it was created. What is that? Well, it means that we create our own problems. And to solve any problem we have, we have to take ownership. It's not our spouse. It's not our parents. It's not the school system. It's not the company. It's not our peers. It's us. It's us. We have to take personal ownership in that. And then we have to think differently to solve any problem on the planet anywhere from anyone at any level of their life. It's learning to think differently, and it's the hardest thing for people to be able to do. So we're gonna go through seven segments. We went through, we're going through the networking, the speed networking, so we went through that. In your connections that you had in the speed networking, um, something might have been said, there might have been something shared, there might have been somebody you connected with that can solve your biggest challenge. And so when you look at my biggest challenge is this, if you, I think you all raised your hand that you wanted to solve it. So if you really want to solve it, you can. But you have to think in a different way. Um, we're going to be going into segment two in, in just a moment. This is a 12-month a program. There's one topic every month, and so today's topic is fine-tuning our profitable systems. Next month is achieving our life vision. And so um, I was revealed my life vision at the age of eight. I was at a camp in um, Wisconsin. I was out by the canteen. I was just standing there like a kid, you know, by a canteen. And I don't know how. I don't. It's kind of strange to me, but I still remember it 43 years later. And it's like God had a conversation with me. And he said, Mark, you're a pretty average to below average kid. I'm like, I get that. I get that. He said, if you're a good steward with what I give you, you'll touch the world. I'm like, cool. That sounds kind of cool. And so my life vision, what I was put on this planet to do is touch every single person in the world, one person at a time, make a huge difference in every aspect of their life in a really fun and exciting way. And yes, that's seven plus billion people. My wife and I have been married for 31 years. We have seven kids. There are seven continents. 
Each child was given a common name when they were born. And so there's a plan. There's so much that had been, I have devoted the last 43 years of my life to go ahead and putting that together. What's your life vision? What were you put on this planet to accomplish? I believe every single person on the planet, all seven billion people, are unique and powerful, but they don't know it. They don't know where their power is. They don't know why they go through what they go through. So the discovery of one's life vision, I believe, may be the most important thing that an individual could ever do in their life. So what we're going to do is we are going to watch Discovering My Life Vision. Am I achieving my full potential? No, really. Am I? What was I put on this planet for? How are my passions connected into my life vision? How do I discover my life vision and then how do I live that vision on a daily basis? These are some great questions which are being answered every day by a group of individuals just like yourself who participate in mastermind groups. Why is the discovery of our life vision so valuable and life-changing? Helped me to discover joy and purpose, Randy Eicherman. Helping me to raise my children and love life, Ginger Ann Collins. Amazing, fun, seducing, intoxicating, life-changing, Misty Reynolds. Helping me to see greater success in business, Kevin King. Past hurt, I am understanding the value better, Nancy Hertz. Giving me focus and perspective I've never had before, Alan Stein. It's like the universe is opening before my very eyes, Emily Nelson. My passions, gifts, and talents are coming alive, Don Herbeck. Our life vision is like a fingerprint. No two are precisely alike. There are over seven billion people on this planet. Everyone who has ever lived is living now and will live in the future has their own unique and special life vision designed within our very DNA. Discovering one's life vision, in a way, is a journey. And by watching this short video and sharing it with everyone else we know, we are at the beginning of that journey. Phase one, the discovery of my life vision. Step one, draw a circle. Step two, list out all our passions around the circle. Step three, work the center of the circle to discover our life vision from the fingerprint of our passions. Phase two, living out my life vision daily. Just like anything in life, which has significant value, connecting with others to join in our journey is key to our success. Do this exercise as a family, as a company, as groups, as a network. Next steps. One, register online. Two, join a mastermind group, coffee connection, and or a dimensional living home study group. Three, invest 30 minutes a week out of the 10,080 minutes in a week to pursue our very own life vision. Step four, complete a full life vision profile. Step five, pay it forward and help others do the same. This video is compliments of the individuals who passed it along to us. The Vision Project, Legacy Partners, Coffee Connections, Mastermind Seminars, and Dimensional Living Home Study Groups. We trust that each of us will follow through on this video, as others have, and it will help us to reach beyond our dreams and goals in every area of life. Pay it forward and pass this video along to everyone you know. Questions? Please call the individual who passed this video along to you or call toll-free 888-230-2300 or outside the U.S., please call 630-393-9909. All right. Questions, thoughts? Questions, thoughts? <laughs>
skills. I felt like I almost missed it and I wanted it to go a little bit more in depth. Um, everything else is just kind of informational, I guess. But, but the meat of that, I guess I wanted to go a little bit further into that, but maybe that's what you're going to be doing. Well, I wasn't. It will. For it. Yeah. yeah. Good observation. I wasn't, but I will. Because you asked a question. If nobody had any questions, like, I guess this group isn't really that interested. They're more interested in solving their problems. At least they think they are. Maybe they're not. I mean, if they're not really that interested in, you know, discovering their life vision, like their purpose for being on the planet, then I don't know. Maybe they should be focused on their problem. And so it took me and a whole bunch of other people over 25 years to figure out the gift that I was given as an eight-year-old on how to put that into a system. So there's an absolute system. It's real life. Sarah really is four years old. There's a little girl out there at the age of four, and she went ahead and did that. Um, next month, I believe, well, probably, I don't know if it'll be on this one or not. There's a recording that Life Masteries is now putting together as a family. Um, husband and wife, mid-30s, three kids, and the husband, the father went ahead and recorded his kids doing this exercise as a family. It took him 11 minutes. It's magical. And so it's, it's pretty simple, actually. What you do is you just take a blank sheet of paper and just draw a circle, and then just list everything you're passionate about around the circle. If you say, well, passionate about. You know, I've done that. Too. Real passionate. I mean, chocolate, golf, or laying around. I don't care. I mean, it's it's really anything you, you want it to be. And, you know, and so it can be anything. So just start writing. There's no right and wrong. I believe that of the 7 billion people on the planet, there's no two people of the 7 billion people that have the exact same passions. We have overlapping of passions. But, but none of us have the exact same passions. And so when we draw the circle and then list everything out around the circle, I believe that at the center of our life, um, of all of our passions, is the fingerprint of our life vision. That's why we were put on this planet. When someone becomes clear in the dad you know, they recorded this, he sent it to me, he, didn't have, he had no intention of ever going beyond that. I'm like, Brent, this is amazing. It's like, uh, well, it wasn't really good quality, audio quality. Who cares? I said, you need to listen to this again, buddy. You don't recognize like how magical this is. He went back and he listened to it again. And then he emailed, he said, you're absolutely right, Mark. Because I heard my children's heart. And so when you can tap into somebody's heart, okay, and so owning one's business, um, why do you want to own a business? You know? Help to help people. Okay. Yeah. Better than working for someone else. Better than working for somebody else. Okay. I'm a terrible employee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've told my kids similar things that I'm unemployable. I mean, I don't know anybody who would want to hire me or could hire me or could handle me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> this is my wife, Rosanna. <laughs> of 31 years. She's laughing with me, not at me. There she is. <laughs> With a wife and four kids, I learned early on that just they're always, always laughing with me. Never, ever laughing at me. And so when we discover our life vision, why we were put on this planet, then everything else in life makes sense. And think about the most painful thing that you've ever had happen to you in your life. <coughs> Everybody got it? That most painful thing that happened in your life happened for a very 
any specific reason. I believe. I believe it was to help you to achieve your life vision. So the hurt, the pain, the tough things in life were there to help us. We don't typically look at that so fast. Now discovering your life vision, um, you know, the passion's pretty easy. What does that condense down into? And there's, and there's actually a science to it. And so if you bring me your passion circle, I can help you and others can help you here um, to come up with a sentence that it's a start. It's a start on a journey. It's a lot easier to change the direction of a moving car than one that's standing still. And you really can't explain it. I can't explain it even now. It's something that you just have to experience. So the seven segments, what we're going to be doing is the wins and biggest challenges. That's segment two. And so in that seg segment, Steve's going to be um, leading that. And so what are your wins from the last 30 days? Right? Yes? Okay. I want to make sure. I'm like, I got kind of thrown into the MC. I hope I'm doing a good job. I'm trying to do it so well. But I might mess everything up. And you know what? That's okay as well. But what are the wins? in the last 30 days that you've had, and then, you know, and or what are the biggest challenges that you have? So let's welcome Steve. Beach, beach. <laughs> I feel uh, like I'm sharing something that I don't know what the whole picture is about here. I'm learning. And uh, so but last week, Don asked if anyone felt like was willing to volunteer to speak and I thought okay well I don't mind speaking what am I going to speak on and uh, but immediately a, uh, a passage came to my mind I have a, uh, a background in, in the church and so everything that happens in my life is filtered through the Bible and the first thing that came to my mind was the parable that Jesus talked about that you cannot put new wine into old wine skins. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And so I thought, what is the connection here? And then as I began to go through the process of the coffee connection, when last week when I filled out this card and gave it to uh, Mark, I felt like at that point I was on an examination table. In fact, a surgery table. <laughs> and he had laid me wide open with just a few questions. And really, it exposed myself to me. Other people didn't see what was going on in my life. But I was exposed. And as I began to process this, I was receiving some new information and also being reminded of old information that I'd been uh, given previously and I realized that new information is like new wine in old wine skins in the process of wine uh, going from juice to wine there's a chemical process that takes place and when it was put in a bag of leather a wine skin it the, the leather changed its composition as the wine was changing its composition and so after the wine had been consumed, if they were to put that, put new wine skin in that, uh, new wine in the old wine skin, the new wine skin would just crack and disintegrate and it would all go out. And I realized that every time we receive some new information, there's something from our past that has to be set aside. We cannot take new information and process it and move forward with some of even some of the uh, successes that we've had in the past because they are not even able to contain what the new knowledge is going to bring about in our life and and there's another passage that came to my mind later in where in Luke chapter 16 Jesus said that if you are faithful with a little which you shared this morning you will be given more but if you're unfaithful with a little then, it'll be, then what you have will be taken from you and given to someone else. And as I was thinking about what to share this morning, I realized that I can look back into my past life and realize where I was given something, some knowledge that was a treasure. 
but I did not do anything with it. I was not a good steward of it. And I and when you get older, you begin to see these things. And at the age of 55, I can look back and see, wow, I was shown this then, but I did not apply it. I did not use that sh as it should have been. And so it did not benefit me any. In fact, it harmed me. It brought harm to my family and to my friends because what I was given could have been a blessing, but other people have missed out on that because I did not take it and apply it. The wonderful thing, though, is that we can always open to a clean page and start all over. And the thing that I like about this group, being a part of it for one week, or one week is that people will share with you what you need to hear but then they work with you on how to put a system into place so you don't get left after the seminar with all this great information and then do nothing and so wins and what is it wins and biggest challenges for me, a win has been to know that I've got a clean piece of paper to start writing on. Biggest challenges is how do I break 55 years of habits and patterns of thinking so I don't keep going back to where I was. Nice. Wow.